Hello, everybody, and once again, well, welcome back. This is On Air, and your host is Laura Croci. If you love the bel canto, if you love the operatic singing, this is the right place for you, because live from Genova, Capucin Chiaudani. Welcome back, Capucin. Hi. Hello. Buongiorno. Hi. <laughs> buongiorno, buongiorno. So nice to have you here. So nice. Thank you. So, Capucin. Nice Yeah, yeah, it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Last time you disclosed the secret life of an operatic singer, and wow, <laughs> I'm, I'm still impressed. I discovered that it's well, it's unbelievable. It's like having an athletic mindset. It's like yes, preparing it yourself for the Olympiad. Whoa! <laughs> well, we are uh, yes, we are conscious athletes of the voice. I always say because we are. It's a life wow. uh, journey. It is like this. It's a complex recipe. That's why we need so much time, so long, so many years to prepare ourselves and to become an operatic singer. It is as it is. Welcome to the boat. It is like this. I mean, uh, at high level, you need uh, time. You need a lot of repetition in order yeah. to get all the skills, uh, the coordinations of more abilities in automatic pilot. As an athlete, wow, wow, in wow, fact. Wow, wow. Yes, yes, I agree, I agree. And I would like to remind our listeners, our audience, um, a few points, um, a few key points of your career, because it's, it's really important to understand who you are <laughs> before, before starting with the topic of today. Uh, with, yeah, with today's topic, actually. So let me, let me tell our listeners who is Capucin Chiaudani. She She's from Genova, as you know, and she's an Italian oper operatic singer and voice professor in Zurich at the Kaleidos University. She's an artist, she has an accomplished international singing career, and she's been featured in several main operatic soprano roles like Tosca, as you can see behind her, <laughs> Medea, and particularly Fedra of Simone Mai. And this is very interesting because uh, Capucin Chiodani is featured in the first worldwide recording of uh, uh, Fedra of Simone Mai. That is really impressive. You can find this recording on Amazon if I'm um, if I'm yes, correct yes. Yes, oh yes. yeah wow wow it's amazing it's amazing and also Capucin gives regular online and on-site master classes and very recently she has been invited at the 15th convention of the Association of Singing Professors in Catalonia Spain wow it's amazing and she gave uh, um, a master class to them right Yes, yes, it was their congress, uh, their early congress. It was the 15th edition of the singing professors. So it was a masterclass for the professors, for uh, also uh, speech therapists, logopedists. There were also some students. So it was uh, an important moment. It was uh, very nice to have this uh, privilege, certainly to have the privilege yeah. to teach for them. And <laughs> it was uh, quite exciting, but everyone was happy. So I was... Uh, Most happy of, uh, of all. Yes, yes. Everything was nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you give lessons. You give lessons to uh, students from all around the world. Yes, yes. I, I teach now more than singing. I guide others and uh, of any levels, also students, but also first Liga, actually colleagues, and um, in presence, but also online. Also online. Well, for two reasons. There are sometimes also persons who are re really far in the sense if you are in New York <laughs> and you have not the possibility to come here uh, online is the only chance you have, the only option. And I must say it's possible to help. It's possible to do it also online, even if there are some skeptical persons. But I must say all the skeptical persons after the first try uh, changed their mind and came back and said, ah, interesting i didn't know <laughs> i didn't believe it i couldn't think that it uh, was possible also to learn online but, but yes if you have the experience a very good year and a very good internet connection it's possible to help yes because we are speaking about a lot uh, about body and about maneuvers like in any other sport so it's possible uh, to help when you know what to do when to do how to do it and why to do it singing can become actually easy yeah, and yeah, reliable. Yeah, yeah. And so it's possible to help online. I teach uh, online, as I was saying, especially in this period where a lot of things happen online also for this historic moment. 
Mm. Actually, I, I teach a lot online because some persons had not the possibility to reach the teachers or their academies. And so they asked for help and I was here to help and it was my pleasure. So yes, uh, on a daily basis, actually, very often in the late evening, because in Italy, it's yeah, yeah. very late, but in America, it's afternoon. <laughs> so also, I, my biorhythm a bit changed, but I'm, I'm happy to be here because, um, of course, being an Italian, having had an international career, singing the really main operatic, also heavy, uh, important roles, I have uh, knowledge and uh, I know how the real world out there is, the business is. And of course, I was uh, grown in this bel canto tradition. Yeah. In Italy, we drink it a bit with the milk. So uh, I was, uh, I think I was, I am able to give my heritage further. Also, I was very lucky to have studied with. I must say, great teachers. When I was younger, many years ago, I studied with, for example, the Maestro of Pavarotti, who was still a Rigopola oh, alive. Mm, I studied with the fantastic soprano Gabriella Tucci. I studied with Elizabeth Schwarzkopf. These are really big names. Who knows opera, knows who I'm speaking about. And um, in opera, in classical singing, uh, we teach uh, and we give the heritage orally, mainly. So uh, it's important not to lose this. It's important to keep it and to... So what I learned from them, they learn it certainly from someone else. We can go back uh, to Farinelli. <laughs> we can go back... <laughs> no, it's not a joke. It's like this. And so it's important to not keep uh, with jealousy this knowledge, this wisdom, but to give it further yeah. to the next generation. Otherwise, it will go lost, simply yeah. as that. And so I feel this responsibility. I feel that I have received a lot and was I was lucky enough uh, to have these wonderful teachers and I wish that this goes on. So this is what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's like being part of something that will last forever. Again, can you repeat? I think that um, sharing what you've sharing. learned yeah, Sherry. It's like being part of something that will last forever. Yes, it, it does. It does. Because, uh, of course, uh, the wisdom goes on in the new generations. And uh, this is my, my hope. This is my aim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Nice. Very nice. So we can say you've become the, the worldwide ambassador of Bel Canto to, to your students. Uh, and I would like to ask you something that is more about technique. Because mm -hmm. when we speak about, we talk about bel canto, it's like um, we, we take it for granted. It's, we, we are talking of singing in Italian language. Mm. So how, how much is important um, learning Italian? How much diction and communication are important mm -hmm. to, to sing the right way? Well, uh, very important. <laughs> the answer is very uh, a lot. So bel canto, bel canto uh, is a word made actually of two words. One is bel, is an adjective which, which means beautiful. beautiful. Canto means singing. So first of all, it should sound beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> and for this, we need to study and to train ears and ears and ears this uh, artistry, this uh, abilities. Okay, this is one thing. So said this, Let's say that we achieved the bel canto. Uh, bel canto is not only beautiful voice. Bel canto means to sing legato, very fluid, uh, to be able to be very expressive, to be able to organize uh, the phrasing of what we are saying. It's very uh, big <laughs> <laughs> topic and uh, it uh, would need a lecture to explain this. But let's say that we have the bel canto. Mm. The bel canto cannot be detached, it's impossible, isolated from the word. Uh, I say joking as a joke, bel canto and uh, bel detto, which means well said. Bel canto, the Italian operatic tradition cannot exist without the text mm. for many reasons. One is that the Italian language <laughs> is the language for singing classical singing because it's a blessed language the italian vowels are pure vowels 
pure, authentic vowels, not like the American vowels or, or, or <laughs> in the back or in French language, a bit nasal. No, they are really pure, authentic. It's the best, actually, natural placement of the, of the voice to sing with a wonderful projection. That's why in the music history, actually, the best singers have always been Italian, Corelli, Di Stefano, Tevaldi, Mirella Freni, Pavarotti, and, and, and we can go on endlessly, Farinelli. Why are we more clever? It's because of the language. We are yeah. very, very, very blessed. Sorry so, for the other's language, but this is the yes, truth. <laughs> so that's why <laughs> uh, Belcanto is really an Italian uh, brand. And if you want to sing well um, the Italian repertoire, please, 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 please make a little effort learn a basic Italian. It would be as if, I don't know, a person wants to make a career in Broadway without knowing English. It's impossible. I mean, it's almost impossible because you would end making sounds like a bird, just for names, without any meaning, any sense, without knowing what I'm actually saying. So if you don't know actually what you're saying, you don't know how to say it. And this comes through. So it has diction and communication go hand in hand. You have to know uh, how to say, how to pronounce, to be understood. It's very important. It's very important that people can understand you because the more you are understandable, the more you can emotion and reach them. Yes, the text is the bridge from you to the audience. So the diction has to be really uh, be in place which also there is a long topic. Diction means having a consciousness of what you're doing with your jaw, what you're doing with your tongue, what you're doing with your lips, what you're doing with the cavities eh, in your mouth. You, you have to know what, what you're doing. You have to be very, very <laughs> conscious, like an architect. You, you need to know and isolate all these elements. For example, just an example, because maybe... Uh, persons who are not uh, in this world, they don't know it. Uh, when we speak, see, we speak in tandem. The, the, the diction uh, is constantly over-articulating. I'm over-articulating. I'm like, nom, 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 <laughs> biting every <laughs> syllable and I'm speaking to you. Well, this does not function, for example, for bel canto and for operatic sing singing, even if you would sing a German lead, if you overdo this in tandem, you have a problem. The problem is that you cannot sing this beautiful legato, noble, fluid, elegant lines, fluid. Mm -mm, you can't. So, for example, for us in classical singing, one of the many skills, one of the many abilities is to learn to isolate your diction from your jaw. So you will not make this ta 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 you do it's more still the jaw is more still and the work is more inside for Whoa. example if you don't know it well if you don't know it you don't know it <laughs> <laughs> then you will do this and you will not get this wonderful line so there are really techniques like uh, in any sport i mean uh, okay you need the talent of course but it's also about discipline and knowing what to do. Have the consciousness to know what really works. And so in this way, uh, working on the diction, you will become a really storytellers. You will tell us a story. You will involve us and a communicator. I think it's uh, a lot about this. In fact, in fact, the grandmother of the grandmother of the grandmother of opera started in Toscany, Toscana, in Florence, in Firenze. Eh? And there was a club, let's say, <laughs> of intellectual. Mm? In, I'm not surprised, actually, that was born in Florence. Course, of <laughs> course. Eh? Um, in the 16th century, eh? in the house of Conte Count Bardi. Bardi. So the name of the club was Camerata dei Bardi, in his house which we can still visit it, yes? So there were intellectuals, philosophers, musicians, mathematicians, and they spoke about God, the world, <laughs> the destiny of human being, etc. And they, mm, let's say, 
started the first experiments of opera. And the first of experiments, so the grandmother of the grandmother of opera was uh, recitar cantando. Recitar means what actors do, which means uh, um, declamating and telling a story, recitare, cantando, mm? singing. So the text already then was super, super, super important. And we never have to forgive, for, um, forget this. Otherwise, the risk is that we vocalize. And this is not interesting. This is very boring. People then don't come a second time because you are not involving them. You are not reaching them. So you, we are not birds. We are not uh, clarinets, flutes. We are communicators. So the diction is super important in order to reach them, to reach them, to make us under, uh, understandable. And this is real and true for any language, not only for the Italian bel canto. Of course, a lot for us, but if you sing Schumann, Schubert, uh, Brahms leader, you should do the same. Another thing that we have to do, for example, another little um, tip is we have to respect the prosody of the language in which we are speaking. Every language has a certain prosody. How can I say? Intonation, rhythms. I mean, Chinese <laughs> sounds very different yeah. from Italian or French or Russian. So if you sing in Chinese or French or Italian or Russian, even if you sing it, not speak it, you need to know a tiny bit for the language to know, okay, I have to stretch this vowel or I should not stretch this vowel, or I have to stretch this consonant, or I should not stretch this consonant, or maybe I have to double it. For example, in Italian, very often we're, we're very passionate, emotional persons, and we say, oddio, <laughs> yeah, oh mamma mia, no? Mamma mia. <laughs> uh, oddio, which means, oh my God. And we do something uh, without knowing it instinctively. We double the D, oddio, although, Dio, God, is one D. And this is true in normal life, in daily life, and this is true on stage when we sing. So when we will sing, oh, Dio, oh, Dio, it will be doubled. And this is what I was referring, mentioning the prosody. If you know it, you do it. If you don't know it, you can't do it. So it's important if you love Italian opera, if you love bel canto, really believe me. <laughs> Take the time, the energy, hmm? invest a bit of your time and energy to learn in basic Italian. It's really important. It's really important. Also, for example, in the Italian language, we have, as almost in any language, open and closed vowels. Open, o, and o. I mean, closed and open, o, o, or e, e, which means open sound, open mouth. <laughs> o, closed. O, open, e, closed, a, open. And um, in fact, uh, the meaning of a word can change. Very often we have one word in Italian language, but it can change the meaning if you say it with closed uh, or with open vowels. And a foreigner maybe does not know it. And <laughs> a foreigner singer sings uh, something absolutely with no bloody nonsense i mean <laughs> with no sense <laughs> with no sense yeah. because yeah she or he is not aware of this so these are basic things that have to be in place it ha they have to be in place so uh we need to work on this we need to have the time to dedicate us really really to a deep uh work on the text for example learn your arias mm? speaking them before then going in the singing, like a Shakespearean actor, let's say. You read it and you should be very fluid. And usually mm, foreigner uh, singers have some troubles and start to say it in this way, <laughs> <laughs> syllable after syllable, because it's, it's difficult, I understand it. Well, take the time until it becomes fluid. If you're not able to say it uh, nicely, fluidly how can you dream of singing it properly yeah then the next step is to say it rightly so very fluid with the rhythm with the rhythm uh, that you see on the score and the last 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 step 
is um, well to combine the whole <laughs> with also well the intonations, the pitch. But there is a, a big work before mm, on the text. Absolutely, people want to understand nowadays. Uh, we are lucky enough that more and more in the opera houses nowadays they put um, the undertitles up. Uh, because it is such a priority that people want, they want to know what's going on. Eh? Otherwise, they don't come a second time. <laughs> they go to the cinema. So who does this job? Mm? And also students who are entering in this job, they need to feel this responsibility because it's not about us only, about me, about us, my name, my reputation. It's, it's bigger, the picture. It's about becoming really ambassadors, ambassadors mm -hmm. of this art. It's becoming... Uh, it's like finding a way to bring people back to the theater. It's finding a way to make them love this art. It's not true that it is that. It's not true that it is only for older people. It's not true. It is very alive. It is very intense, very passionate. It can emotion, but it's up to us how we, the one who are on stage, will work and will deliver our message. And the message that you have to deliver is a story. And you yeah. do it, certainly also with the diction. And by the way, by the way, the diction is not a decoration in the sense, um, how can I say, the air conditioning in the car. No, 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 no. It's the really motor of the car. <laughs> it's, uh, in fact, so important because a good diction a good diction creates your sound. For example, if I have an American diction, or this, this, which is the American or tongue, my sound will be in the back because my tongue is in the back. But if I put my tongue in the front, the sound is completely different. With the tongue in place, my sound is brilliant. It's like a pearl. It's the Italian pure, authentic, sincere, Italian, ah! And the sound it's gains in quality. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah, just yeah, yeah. understanding or not understanding. It's even more than that. It really, really, really creates your sound. So <laughs> the diction is, in fact, part of the technique. It's not, okay... I concentrate myself on beautiful sound, and at the end of the journey, I will think about the diction. Uh uh, no, it's the first step of your work, it's the first milestone of your work, of your homeworks, not the end. And sometimes there is a bit of this misconfusion, especially uh, with non Italian singers. So I, I, I really <laughs> stretch this, I really insist no, 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 no. Let's change plan. Let's speak about the text from the start. Let's put it in place and you will sing and you will see what happens to your voice. It's a part of the technique. You will sing better. You will sound better. You will be more happy because the audience will be more happy. <laughs> and yep. so at the end, um, yes, uh, everything uh, uh, is a whole, is a whole. So diction, diction, um, is really is really the skill the skill that brings you to become a, a real artist a good singer and a real artist a good singer is someone who really masters the craft an artist is something different an artist brings you to a spiritual level which means that it touches your heart that it emotions you i agree mm -hmm. and um Di Stefano, Di Stefano was this fantastic Italian tenor who sang a lot with Callas also in the older years. When he was an older singer, and the voice was not uh, as the splendid <laughs> as it was when he was young, which is completely normal, well, he was able to motion through the text, the way he was offering uh, the pleasure of saying things, the pleasure that you sometimes hear and see mm, when you go to hear some Shakespearean actors, the pleasure of the word of saying it. Well, we do it singing it, but it's the same. Uh, it has to be one uh, element on which we focus our work. Yeah, because at the end, at the end of the story, mm, 
I hope that, uh, well, through this art, we are able to emotion, emotion people and make maybe their life for a moment, for a split of the second, for five minutes, for two minutes, better. Yeah. They get out of the theater <sighs> elevated with something to bring home, a little flame, a little hope, a little joy, a little cry, a little something that made uh, it worse to be there. And, and this is what we have to achieve. And I think we do this through the communication. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And also, guys, if you learn a little bit of, English, of Italian, your next stay to, in, in Italy well, will be a more enjoyable. So please learn Italian. <laughs> learn a little yeah. bit of Italian. Anyway, in Italy, there are also uh, holidays and opera programs very often in the summer for foreigner singers where you learning Italian and learn a bit of uh, singing. There are this uh, kind of programs. Huh? It's nice. So yeah. come, come to Italy, the yeah. most beautiful <laughs> country in the world. In fact, yeah, yeah, bel paese, el bel paese. Yes, el bel paese, so, el bel canto. So thank you, thank you for sharing with us all the, this in, technical information, Capucine. I would like to remind our audience, our listeners, how they can reach you. Go on Facebook and check this page, Capucine's bel canto for you, friends. If you prefer. Instagram, here Capucine uh, account. Uh, you need to um, check Capucine underscore Chiaudani. Then we have YouTube. Here's uh, Capucine channel. Capucine, Capucine's by Canto for You vocal coaching channel. There is a website www.capucinechiaudani.com and a couple of Facebook groups. Here, the first one, Bel Canto for You. That is a huge a huge group, mixed group, right? From all around the world. Yes, I created it when the, um, the COVID exploded. Yeah, because I was thinking, well, let's do something <laughs> here. <laughs> the situation is quite serious. And uh, well, everyone knows that uh, the theaters were closed and performance canceled and artists, colleagues uh, without uh, a job. So also students were not allowed to go to the conservatories also to the academy so I tried to to do something to put all these persons a bit together give some hope and I well offered a lot of master classes and uh, many master classes for free also really to to make this world go going on and um, I think people uh, appreciated it, or I hope so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that of was, course. That yeah, was I, my, my, my thought behind it, yes. So, yes, the group uh, grew. Now we are more than 3,500. Wow. And, uh, yes, there are students, but also mm, singers of the First Liga. Yeah, 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 professionals, really, professors. And, yeah, it's a nice wow. way to, well, to, support, uh, to support each other. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And the newest, the newest uh, one, uh, the newest group on Facebook is Bel Canto for her. Yeah, it's recently, dedicated to women. Nice. <laughs> very nice. Recently, I did the same. I thought, why not a group for sopranos, mezzo sopranos, and altos? So if you are a female singer, a lady singing, please join Bel Canto for yes. her. But also, if you're just passionate, you don't have to sing. Huh? I come from time to time and put a little vocal technique tip or uh, I post a little section extract of a mini lesson just because well also people who are not singers uh, may have this passion why not may go why to not? the theater and and think but how is it how does it happen so it's a way to exchange and uh, to learn from each other and to exchange thoughts and experiences so I do this in uh, both groups I invite you uh, <laughs> If you wish, if you are interested, if you are passionate about music and about uh, singing to Belcanto for her or Belcanto for you, which is the same, but it's a bit more mixed. So, here so we are. guys, no matter who you are, if, if you feel the passion for the Belcanto, you find the right, the right way to um, pursue your passion. So go and check Belcanto for you or for her. Um, Capucine, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. It was such a pleasure. My really, pleasure. Really. Thank, thank you for you. inviting me. <laughs> thank you for everyone watching and listening. And well, viva il canto and viva il bel canto. <laughs>
Keep singing. Keep singing. Yeah, yeah, singing. keep singing. Ciao, Capi. Okay. See you next time. Ciao, Arvidel. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.